No joke, the most critical component of your grip can be built and refined simply by air drumming. If you've dealt with slow or stiff hands, inability to play smoothly and feel relaxed on the drums, and everything your hands do just feels forced, difficult, and unmusical, then today's lesson is for you. Without finding and fine-tuning your fulcrum, that's the hinge point in your grip, where you're pinching the stick, you'll forever struggle to play well on the drums, not to mention you may deal with excessive fatigue or even pain. Good news today, though, is that you can actually solve this and even perfect your grip with just one stick, no kit, and not even a practice pad. And I'm going to show you how. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so glad you're hanging out today. I help self-taught beginner drummers know what to practice so that they can nail songs and sound awesome with a band and be that drummer that other people want to jam with and want to have in their band. And hey, while you're here, I have a special free gift for you in the description, and especially if you're new, this is definitely for you, especially, especially if you're a beginner. I want you to grab my Know What to Practice three-part daily practice guide. This is so cool because even if you're really busy, even if you've just got 30 minutes a day, if you feel like you have no clue what you're doing, you're new to the drums, you're trying to learn online, you don't feel like you have a lot of natural talent and you're just like, what do I practice? How do I get started? This is a great place to start. This is gonna help you out a ton because in this guide, we break down all of drumming into three areas of practice. If you make sure you're practicing a little bit in this area, this area, and this area, you will grow consistently in the coming weeks and months. It's, all, it's really cool. You're gonna grow a bunch, you're gonna have a lot of fun too. So go grab that in the description, totally free. Let's get on with today's lesson. Other drummers and teachers talk about how everything should be relaxed and natural, but everything to you feels forced. And you find yourself stuck at a speed wall that you can't break past. That's a frustrating place to be, but trust me, we've all been there. I've been there. I've had so many students who have been there and who have come out of this. Um, I had a particular student who was having an issue with his weak hand where his strong hand was actually doing pretty well and he had a nice relaxed rebound. It was looking good, but with his left hand, it was always just a little bit wonky and he was never sure how to have his wrist rotated. Like, should it be here or should it be here? And it was always forced and not a smooth motion. And it was just this constant issue plaguing him. And what was really interesting was we had him do the stick toss that we're, we're, we're getting into today, where the whole idea is we're just air drumming. I'm gonna break all this down for you. Had him do that for a little bit, and he was like, oh, wait a second. Okay, now I see exactly which way my wrist needs to be rotated. Okay, now I've got this fluid motion. Okay, this is making sense. Now let me hit the drum again. Okay, now we're actually getting rebound. And it was kind of funny, this whole chain of successful events that happened as a result of that simple practice of just air drumming, doing this stick toss. And so it was very cool, it was very game changing for him in that moment. And this was a huge thing that led to him really getting that rebound that he always wanted and feeling some freedom and being able to then play even singles hand to hand. So here's where we're going today. You can find and fine tune your fulcrum, so that hinge point in your grip, that sweet spot by air drumming, which will ultimately help you to play more smoothly and quickly. So we're gonna do the air drumming stick toss, as I like to call it. This is nothing that unique or revolutionary, but it's so simple, and a lot of times the simple things are the things that we miss, right? But if you, if you humble yourself to practice the really simple, ridiculously simple things, and make this a regular part of the beginning of every practice session, this is gonna have huge benefits that carry across the board, across your playing. You're gonna find yourself navigating more smoothly around the kit, you're gonna feel more relaxed, and you're gonna be able to play faster, no joke. And I'm gonna explain all of, all of why this is and how this works. So here's what we wanna do. We just wanna create an up and down motion. And this all starts with the completely critical thing of having a fulcrum point. I can't preach this enough in these lessons because there, you can't do anything well on the drums without good grip. And so this is so fundamental, so important. Find your fulcrum point. A great place to start is just midway up that middle finger and then have kind of the, the side of your thumb pressing there against it. And make sure you can then take your other hand and just go like this. And actually, if, you're, if your left hand is your weak hand, do this with your left hand right now. I'm doing left hand because it's the better camera angle because of this camera right here. But whichever hand you want to start with, you might especially want to target that weak hand as you work on this. But make sure, okay, we can get this hinge going on. We've got our hinge point, we've got our fulcrum. Then practice just doing this, flicking your wrist up to toss the stick up, and then giving it a little push down to toss the stick down. And when the stick goes down, the button will hit your palm right here. 
that's where it'll stop. So you can literally just go like this, up and down, and see if you can get this into a steady, smooth motion, where it's almost like the stick's moving in slow motion as we do this. We've got some wrist happening, maybe even a little bit of forearm, just a little bit of up and down with the forearm, but a lot of stick within the hand. If you're new to the drums, stick motion within the hand is critical. We never wanna be playing like this. That's not good. That's leading to that forced playing, the unmusical forced playing that leads to fatigue and pain. Not good. We don't wanna be doing this. We wanna have this loose motion within our hands. And probably if I could pinpoint the number one issue in beginner students' grip, it's a lack of fulcrum. It's that simple. A lack of a hinge point. Make sure you've got this hinge point right here and start off trying it right here. You can also go a little bit closer to your palm. As you play louder and faster, you need to grip a little more firmly, right? This is something else we've talked about here on the channel. And so it helps to move that fulcrum closer to your palm in that case. But starting out, try just going right here and practice going up and down like this. Just smooth, nice and slow. It's almost like you're playing in slow motion, you're floating along, think loose, relaxed. So now as you're doing this, so do this with both hands and spend as many minutes, as much time, as many practice sessions on this as possible to get this feeling completely natural because you need to be able to just pick up a stick and go with this and it just, it feel like a normal natural thing where it's like the stick is an extension of your arm. The stick needs to feel like part of you and it takes some repetition. It's not like you'll be able to just pick this up in the next couple minutes and be like, oh, I've been doing this for years. No, it takes a little bit of time. You'll get the hang of it, but just be patient. Do this at the beginning of every practice session and I promise you it's gonna feel more and more natural. So that's it, that's our action step. But of course the big question at this point is, well, okay, what's next? Like how, how is this applying to drumming? How is this gonna help us play faster? Um, we could cut off the video there, but this wouldn't really be complete, right? I promise you that is the critical action step to be taking every day, but here's what we wanna do next. So really we can break this down into three simple steps. Step one, practice air drumming around the kit. Again, it sounds just kind of stupidly ridiculous, but when you're doing this intentionally, and purposefully, and you're thinking about what am I actually doing? What kind of motion am I using? Man, that's powerful. So be, be practicing this individual hand. So you've got your, you know, your smooth up and down motion. Practice doing it right, left, right, left, right, left. And now practice moving this around the kit. That's our step one. So notice, think about what we're doing here. We're using this, this steady up and down motion. We're going boom, 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 boom. But even if there's no drums in front of you, Remember, even if there's no kit or practice pad, you can be practicing this. Just sitting in your chair and imagining playing around the kit. You're thinking about going from drum to drum to drum, maybe hitting a cymbal here. All the while, you've got, this, you've got your fulcrum here, you've got the stick smoothly hinging, and it's like this slow motion kind of movement. Think about what this is gonna do when you're playing. This is gonna create smoothness because we've got this smooth gliding motion that our sticks are doing. We're not going like this. It's not this haphazard, staccato, rough kind of motion where we're hoping we play in time. We've established a motion, and when we establish a motion, things start to naturally be in time and smooth. So already, we're moving towards smooth playing here at slow tempos. If you wanna be able to play smoothly and slowly and lightly, like play a ballad well without rushing, this whole motion is critical. So that's why this is our step one for moving forward. Step two, though, we're still gonna do the same thing, but now we're gonna hit the drums lightly. So I'm going to take my practice pad off right here. We're essentially going to do the same motion that we've just been doing here, but we're going to now allow the sticks to hit the drums. But we're not trying to hit hard. Because remember, if we have this up and down motion going on right here, we can then just lower it a little bit and just lightly start hitting the drum. Not hitting hard at all. I know it probably sounds awful with the snares off. That's fine. We're not hitting hard at all. It's just kind of this up and down, letting the sticks kiss the drum and bounce right off. It's that whole touching a hot stove analogy where it's like we want to play like that. Which actually is not a bad practice in and of itself with your middle finger or index finger. That's the kind of method of motion we want. It all goes, for me, it all goes back to marimba. Marimba is like a big xylophone with these big rosewood wood bars. And that's the style of playing you want to use on a marimba because you don't want to choke out those wood bars when you hit them with a yarn mallet. You want to hit, pull it out so that you're essentially pulling the sound out. And we want to take that same approach with the drums and that's naturally happening here as we do this motion, just lightly hitting the drums. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm hearing a snare on my shelf over here buzzing like crazy. Oh well. 
Uh, also, you notice how these toms are super dead. I've got all this tape on them. Normally I don't have a ton of tape on them, but if you ever want to have a super dead 70s tom sound, load them up with tape. That's why these are super dead and I just hadn't taken the tape off. Um, anyways, side note, we won't go down the tuning tangents. Great subject for another video. It doesn't matter what kind of, you know, which drums you're hitting here, when you're going to this drum, when you're going to that drum. The point here is just to practice moving around the kit, playing very lightly. I have no ear protection in, but this isn't loud. You can start going a little quicker with it. The goal here though is to, to stay very slow, moving these smooth arcing motions. We're keeping the exact same grip and motion we used air drumming. All we've changed is that we're now just, you know, lowering a little bit. Instead of playing up here in the air, we're going down low enough to hit the drums. Nice and simple, don't overthink it. The whole goal here is to have stick height and motion. So now step three, do the same with just a little bit more volume. Bring your volume up a little bit. And as you're getting louder, that stick height will increase even more because now we've actually got some rebound helping us out. When you're hitting harder, you've got more of that response from the drums, that uh, whichever Newton's law that is, the equal and opposite reaction law, where when you hit the drum, it's going to throw the stick back up. But if you only hit it lightly, it's not gonna give you much. But if you hit it hard, you're gonna get a lot. Now what's also cool about this whole motion is that when you hit a floor tom, the floor tom's not giving you a lot of rebound, but it doesn't matter because we've established this up and down motion. And so when you apply this whole air drumming motion that all starts here with this hinge point, this fulcrum, and this up and down right here, that means you can hit any surface on the drum set and still get rebound. It might be artificial rebound, but that's really what we've got to do here. This is an overlooked missed skill, unfortunately, because so many of us teachers, and especially more academically minded teachers, are teaching rebound, using rebound. And a lot of times that's taught on a super springy pad, but the gap is like, well, okay, we can get all this rebound on, on the snare drum or the practice pad or the top of closed hi-hats, but what about when we're hitting toms? What about when we're hitting the edge of a cymbal? There's no rebound there, so what kind of technique do we need to use? What kind of grip? I hope this clears that up. I hope this answers that for you because this is what allows you to, to glide off of and from and to everything on the drum set, no matter how soft or loud you're playing. It all comes down to motion. And so now you have this fluid motion that scales in tempo. You see, there's this drumming truth um, this is a drumming truth according to, according to me, according to the non-glamorous drummer. This is in our, our list of, of truths here in the non-glamorous drummer handbook. Here it is. Fast playing starts with smooth motion. Smooth motion is created at slow tempos. So what have we done today? We've worked on establishing smooth motion and how have we done it? We've gone very slow. We've started applying it to the kit, making sure it's getting nice and solid. And what's really cool is that once you have a motion, you can play smoothly, you can play more in time and you can start going faster. This is a critical thing to keep in mind, a mindset you have to employ that fast playing starts with smooth motion. If you want to play fast, you have to, you have to get that motion down. You can't expect, if you're playing as sloppy at the slow tempos, you can't expect things to magically sound good fast. Been there, done that. I made that mistake when I was in high school, trying to play fast stuff all the time, but my slow playing was a train wreck. And so my fast playing always sounded like a mess. It was just this vomit of notes. I thought it was sounded cool and I was you know, doing great blazing around the kit, but in reality it was very sloppy. But when I finally started to pay attention to grip, motion, slow playing, suddenly everything got more precise, everything started sounding better, my playing went from amateur high school kid to, you know what, that's actually, that actually sounds okay. That's, that was a big step in me leveling from amateur to professional, and it all, it all started with that motion. That is so critical. So everything we've covered today is your foundation for building speed. This is where speed starts. This is what you've got to work on. This is what you've got to focus on and do at the beginning of every practice session. You've got to commit to doing this every day. And as crazy as it sounds, it all starts with air drumming. So question for you as you go, will you add this crazy simple action to the beginning of every practice session? Will you decide, all right, I'm gonna take Steven's word for it and I'm gonna practice slow air drumming every day and gradually apply that to the kit and trust that the motion is going to create fluidity, which is gonna create speed. Will you do that? Your future self will thank you. You're gonna start making some serious progress in the coming weeks and months. And, uh, and uh, even if this doesn't feel like practicing, because it's also worth noting, 
you know, this isn't a speed exercise or a coordination exercise or something that seems very concrete and productive in the short term. But a lot of times the things that don't seem productive in the short term are extremely productive in the long term. Just like listening to music. That's, that's a side note here. You know, spending time just sitting and listening to music, that is so productive towards your drumming growth. It might not feel like it helps you grow today, but it'll help you grow in the coming weeks, months, years as you grow in that musical maturity. And that's the way this is. So commit to doing it. And hey, be sure to grab that guide too. Uh, don't forget to grab my free gift to you, the Know It to Practice three-part daily practice guide for busy drummers. It's gonna give you some great tips on hand technique and just help you in reviewing what we did today, honestly, and finding your grip. There's some cool um, singles, doubles exercises in there, but we've also got a lot of coordination exercises. So you can work on that. Some tips for listening and song learning. Lots of good stuff packed in there. So that's gonna help you so much in making progress in 2024. So be sure to go grab that e-guide, my free gift to you. All right, I hope this video has been helpful to you. I hope this has been valuable to you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out today. As always, know that you can do this. Stay non-glamorous. I'll see you on the next lesson.